Okay, um, thanks. So I'm here today not as part of the Open Earth Monitor, but as a completely independent project uh, funded by uh, the European Space Agency called World Serial. Um, it's quite a big team that has been involved uh, with it, but it's also already running for quite a few years. I'd like to give you an update on what we've been doing so far and where we are heading uh, right now, because it are quite exciting times. So originally this project was launched by ESA as a feasibility study, technically and scientifically to create the first global crop type maps to actually see if that is, uh, is possible, um, because it had never been done uh, before. Um, this resulted in global crop type maps, um, just of two uh, different crop types. Um, but this was quite successful so far, but really not the end of the story. So that's why uh, we got an extension of three years in the project, um, where now the focus is really shifting from a feasibility study to an operationalization study, let's call it like that, um, to build a crop mapping community around a fully open and that's, I think, also a link with uh, uh, the workshop here, and a cloud-based uh, operational and flexible system. So just the very basics, how do we map crops from space? So usually we start from known uh, locations of crops uh, in the field. Um, based on these, uh, we train crop identification algorithms that once they are trained are applied at scale to produce the actual crop type maps. Usually, the problem already starts in the first uh, first part, and that's really still uh, the biggest bottleneck to date and probably will remain uh, so as well. So there is still huge lack of labeled samples on crop type information. So how can we tackle that to move forward? So there's two ways. One is to make it easier to collect and share reference data on, on crop type information. And we've put a lot of emphasis in doing exactly that. Um, and we've been building an open reference data repository, which uh, is now publicly available already. It has a web-based access, but since recently also an API. With that, you can explore harmonized data sets. So from all these different data sets that we could collect that were existing somewhere already on disks, we harmonize them all to a common data legend. So that's there for you to explore. You can also download uh, these data, uh, use the API uh, to, to work with the data. And recently, we also launched an AI-assisted data upload tool that helps you to contribute your own data. You can chill still choose to keep it private, but because it is AI assisted, actually all the harmonization towards uh, from your local language or whatever um, to the, um, the World Serial Harmonized Legend is done automatically. Of course, you can still intervene, but that's already quite a bit of work that's been taken off your chest. That data has so far been used to produce these first global uh, crop type maps. Uh, so these are the ones uh, on, the, on the, the upper uh, left. We have the temporary crop extend, or what we could also call the crop plant mask. And within that crop plant mask, we have seasonal maps of active crop plant, seasonal crop types, and seasonal irrigation. And for most of the products, also confidence layers that should allow you to assess uh, the quality of, uh, of the expected quality of the product. These are available on quite a few platforms, Google Earth Engine and so on. Um, but then there's still the other problem that even if we have this nice reference data repository with all the data that already resulted in these uh, crop type maps, there is still never enough. Um, and therefore, we're also working on a second uh, aspect to, to tackle the, the lack of labels. And this is uh, on the algorithm itself. So in phase one, the main uh, World Serial project, um, we used still the conventional expert-derived feature computation workflow. So what's that? You get your uh, pre-processed time series and ancillary data from uh, satellites, and then you apply expert feature computation on top of those. So you summarize your temporal dimension based on percentiles, uh, median, means, whatever you as an expert think is needed to recognize the crop. And once you have that, you have your classification features to actually train your crop type algorithm. However, we found out that this still requires many labels and in regions where you don't have them, we have um, generalizability issues. So if we do it like this, we as an expert, unfortunately, don't know everything. So we cannot get everything out of these satellite data signals ourselves. So there still was a bit of an issue with, uh, with this approach. Therefore, now in the second phase, we are really putting a lot of effort into completely revising the classification algorithm itself most specifically that feature extraction workflow. So we no longer trust just the expert. Of course, the expert is still there. 
but the main engine that does the feature extraction is now a seller-supervised learning algorithm that automatically extracts the features. And so for that, we collaborate with NASA Harvest, who uh, developed the Presto model, which is a foundational model that works on a single pixel time series, and that aims to summarize a wide range of different inputs, Sentinel-2, Sentinel-1, temperature and precipitation, altitude, slope, latitude, and longitude, and all of that for an entire year gets summarized into what is called an embedding space of only 128 features. So all of that information is summarized in 128 features. The fact that it's a self-supervised learning algorithm, it can actually be trained on the virtually endless amount of satellite data that we now have already, provided that we don't read the labels. And this is exactly the case. So we learn from millions of unlabeled data points to already summarize in a meaningful way all these different kinds of inputs. And because we did a lot of that already without the need for labels, we can then do any kind of supervised downstream task, such as crop type mapping, with much less uh, labels and with much higher uh, generalizability because we have for many more locations than we have labels for this seller supervised uh, part uh, that uh, played its role. So we, together with NASA Harvest, adapted Presto for the specific specificities of, uh, of uh, World Serial. And we now have this new feature extraction method that is driven by this foundation model. And then we were actually also benchmarking like whether this actually makes sense, if this is true. And so this is just one example where we yeah, left out a few challenging countries where we had some crop type information for. We just left it out from the crop type training. And then we evaluated what we did with the expert features and what we now do with the new approach based on Presto, how we were performing in that, uh, in that country that we left out. And then you can see in that mean column that on average, the self-supervised approach is working much better. So it generalizes spatially much better than the, than the phase one baseline. Temporally, exactly the same. If we leave out all the samples that we have from 2021 and we evaluate the phase one baseline expert features on the 2021 data and we do the same for the self-supervised learning algorithm, then we see again, almost yeah, double the performance. Um, so much better temporal generalizability as well. So that's good. This was a confirmation for us that we could continue like this. So we are now building a system, not only the algorithms, but also a processing system that in the end gives the user quite a few uh, possibilities. So what you as a user should be able to do is that we train for you based on all the data that we have, crop type algorithms, and you can just run the default World Serial products for any year you want and for any region you want. But because we have the seller supervised learning algorithm in between, you can, with your own potentially private reference data, just train the classification part on top of the foundational model and train your custom models, your custom class definitions. So within World Serial, we have a few crops that we support but you can train your own algorithm very conveniently and you still benefit from these millions of samples that were used during the pre-training of the algorithm. And that custom model, you can then apply that also to any year and any area of interest. So this is basically also how, how we see this as both sides of the ocean coming together and where we really benefit from the collaborative approach. So there is on the NASA side, the NASA Harvest Presto developed algorithm that is then plushed into a highly scalable, customizable crop mapping system that within the ESA World Serial project we are building. So that, um, um, uh, that, uh, that workflow that we are building is implemented by default on the Copernicus data space ecosystem and is driven through OpenEO. So all our workflows are translated into OpenEO process graphs that takes away all of the hassle of data loading, pre-processing. Then the feature extraction using Presto is also done um, uh, through OpenEO. And then finally a classification so that you just put in your settings and you get a crop type map out of it. So this is then basically also what we are aiming for to really yeah, make it as easy as possible for the, for the community to create custom crop type maps. So in the end, we just have our World Serial package and then a helper packager, pack package that we are creating within uh, OpenEO. And then it's just in the most simple way, if you want to use the default products, you specify a bounding box, a temporal range, and then it's just one method to generate map that creates your, uh, your in this case, cropland map, but uh, also a crop type map uh, will then be possible. 
so yeah, that, that's a lot of different things that are being developed and that are coming together. Um, and that's also why in the second phase of the project, we put a lot of uh, uh, effort into the uh, capacity building activities. Uh, so we have uh, many different um, uh, learning formats to serve a diverse audience. Uh, so attending workshops is one of them. But um, I think the most uh, important ones or the more inter most interesting ones are like in the middle level webinars. So we have a very important, interesting a stressful webinar coming up on the 17th of October when we will release the first version of the processing system. I'll show you on the next slide uh, how you can register. So through these regular webinars, we give information on the tools we release, how we want to, uh, to gather feedback and, and these kind of things. And then there's also the MOOCs where we dive much deeper into specific subjects. And the first MOOC is going to be launched uh, in November. Will still be mostly about just the reference data. So this reference data repository, how does it work? How you can get your reference data out of it? How can you contribute the data to it? Because that's still what we hope to achieve, that you contribute data that you might have or might collect within a project, and then hopefully also switch that button to make it uh, publicly available and not just for yourself. So. The World Serial uh, Release webinar is planned on the 17th of October. If you're interested, uh, you can uh, register to that QR link. So this is where we will also uh, dive into the, this reference data module, the API, um, and how you can, uh, how you can uh, add your own data. And then in the second part, we will go through uh, a notebook where we show the first version of, uh, of the processing system. This will not have all the functionalities left because the project uh, yet because the project uh, lasts till the end of uh, 2026, but there will already be the possibility to generate uh, some custom uh, cropland and crop type maps, and we hope also to collect uh, feedback uh, from that. Um, there is a lot of information uh, to be shared, uh, so you can also register on the, the newsletter. Uh, for example, uh, within a year from now, we need to have new default models with many more crop types than we were releasing in 2021. Um, so then we'll start a new round of also global production. So although the emphasis at the moment is really on the, uh, on the system itself and to getting the community engaged, um, we will still be producing new global layers as well for a year that is still to be defined. Uh, we hope to have that uh, settled soon. So we have for the new global production happening in a year from now, um, I think it's uh, 12 crop types that we're going to cover now. Unfortunately, the irrigation part will uh, not be covered in the next processing round. It's not part of, uh, of phase two. But other than that, um, we will have a, a whole new set of uh, global layers coming up. But in the meantime, it's mostly about just getting you started uh, using, uh, um, using custom crop type mapping, just running it on the cloud with very limited uh, um, things for you to worry about. So that was it. If there's any questions, happy to tackle.